Are you an amateur radio operator who's getting started with working ham radio satellites? Do you need to know how to properly log these types of contacts? You're in the right place. I will show you how. Let's get started. My name is Lucas Ford, ham radio call sign W6AER. Stick around until the end for an added bonus. I will reveal what I'm currently working on, which might be an interest to satellite operators. It's a real good one. You don't want to miss it. Logging a ham radio satellite contact in your logbook follows very similar process to logging any other type of amateur radio contact. However, I will assume you have never done this before. If you use your own call sign during the contact, it's pretty straightforward. If you used a club call, for example, the same process applies. But obviously, you will need to use that when creating the log entry. This may come up during field day, for example. You will need to make a note of the exact date and time of the contact. All hams log using the universal standard time. The date might be different than your date, so be very careful. For example, I have to log tomorrow's date starting the late afternoon from here in the West Coast, where we use specific standard time. Usually your login program will tell you UTC time, but if you are paper logging and enter it later, this is rather important to pay attention to. Your phone can also tell you UTC time. I recommend setting this up on your phone as well. Having the wrong time and sometimes date is the most common mistake I see. You will need to make note of the frequency used for both uplink and downlink, though you always log the transmit band. Sometimes you are also asked for the receive band, but it's not always needed. However, on some satellites, they are the same. An example is the green cube, where everything is done on the 70 centimeter band and both uplink and downlink frequencies are the same. This makes it easy, but it's rarely the case. You will need to make a note of your mode used. This can be FM, single sideband, or CW like on linear satellites, or packet. And there are some other variants, but those are the most common. Make a note of the signal reports if exchanged. Though these are not often exchanged in satellite contacts, and frankly, very much optional. In fact, I can't remember the last time I got a signal report. If not exchanged, it will always be the default 5.9 for FM and single sideband. For packet and CW, it will be 5.9.9. Most people do, including me. I always do leave it on a default. Satellite operators exchange and care more about the grid. Therefore, you need to know what your grid is. When I say grid, I'm referring to grid squares. If you do not know your grid square, you can find it at levinecentral.com slash ham and click on the Maidenhead Grid Locator Lookup Map. I will leave you a link below. The name of the satellite, of course, will be required, but be sure to make a note, especially if you work in multiple BERTs in one sitting. BERTs is a slang word used for satellites, by the way, by some amateur radio operators. I am curious, which one is your favorite satellite to work? What is the most exotic or memorable satellite contact? Please leave it in the comments below, as I'm always interested in hearing about this. And pretty much this is all the information you need. Let's go over how to log in the software. I will be using Hamradio Deluxe in this example, but the process is practically identical for most other Hamradio logging applications. All you do is click on Add, and the Add New Contact tab comes up. Once this is up, add the call sign. In my case, I'll be logging a Japanese station. Check the date. In my case, I am logging a contact that I had a week or so ago. So my date is 8.11. The time on this contact is 20.03 UTC. You always want to be logging in UTC. Now, this was a satellite contact that was on the 70 centimeter band. The frequency is 435.311. It will auto fill the band for you. Make sure you select packet right here, which is PKT. And you will be doing the same thing below under the antenna satellite tag. The name of the satellite is the IO117, also known as the Green Cube. Mode is gonna be packet, which is PKT. Once you entered every, all the data and you got the date, the time, frequency, you need to go to propagation, select satellite, and you're all set. You don't need to fill in the grid. You don't need to fill in the signal report because it will most likely autofill. If the grid is incorrect, you can change it in the locator. Locator and the grid are the same thing. Hit add, and you will see your satellite contact here. On my logbook, I have a separate area for satellite name and satellite mode, so I can quickly see who I had contacts with. However, if you have a contact that's not a packet contact, such as on single sideband or FM, 
The only things that you need to change are the following. In the mode, you'll select the mode. In this case, it was single sideband. And you also need to select antenna slash satellite tab, the satellite name corresponding to the satellite you worked. And the mode needs to be, in this case, single sideband. Single sideband contacts and CW contacts are usually on linear satellites. However, if you are logging on FM contact, such as the one here for the SO50 satellite, you will need to select FM mode and also FM mode selected in the antenna slash satellite area. All the rest of the settings are the same. Make sure you select satellite in the propagation mode. This is what most people forget. In the case of SO50, for example, the transmit band is two meters, so make sure you select it. Your frequency does not have to be incredibly accurate as long as you indicate clearly whether it's a two meter band contact or 70 centimeter contact or whatever else it might be, you should be okay. And that's really all there is to it. Once you see it done, it's fairly straightforward, but it's important not to forget any of the steps which I have demonstrated here or your log confirmation may not match up with the other stations. Also, once you have done this a few times, it will become second nature. Though if you need to refer back to the video, now you know where to look. You can just upload to LOTW, EQSL, or any place where you chase awards. While digital logging is great and my preferred way of doing so, be sure to back up your logbook data to prevent loss in case of computer issues or data corruptions. These do happen. I hear many horror stories and I do not want you to be one of these statistics or experience data loss. If you are in the field, I have a nice tip for you. I have a satellite specific logbook available on amazon.com. Originally, I designed this for my own needs and decided to make it available to everyone. It is sometimes easier to use a paper log, especially in the field when operating portable and transcribing it later to software-based logging systems. This is what I do sometimes. Bonus time, as I promised, here's something I'm very excited about. I have another book coming out right now. I am shooting for mid 2024. The book will be called Ham Radio Satellites, a complete guide, bird hunting for amateur radio. Generally, it takes me about two years to complete a book. If you want to be notified once available, shoot me an email. I will send you a note once ready, maybe even something a little extra. And while you're at it, if interested in DXing, please check out my DX book available now, Ham Radio DX, a complete guide. How to go from karaoke to DXCC Rockstar. Available from our friends at DX Engineering as well as Amazon.com if you're interested in the Kindle edition. I will leave the links below. And as we say in Ham Radio World, 7.3 and good DX. In this case, also good bird chasing. Until the next video, this is Lucas, W6AR.